If you have done any date related stuff in DAX, you would realize that having a calendar table is mandatory. Many times when you are working with data that doesn't really have a dedicated calendar table, it becomes a hassle to create one. So in this video, let me show you how I made this calendar table out of thin air. To create the calendar table, just go to get data and then click on the blank query. That's right. We are going to make the calendar table out of nothing. This will take us into Power Query. It will just place the cursor there asking you, so what is this blank query that you want? The function that we are going to use is list dates. And this function takes three parameters. What is the starting date of your calendar? how many days you want and what type of duration this is. It will be a day. So let's just make the calendar for 2023. To get the start date, you can use hash date notation and then specify 2023-1-1. That stands for 1st of January 2023. And then we would like to have 365 days. The duration would be hash duration 1000. That stands for one day, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. And when you hit enter, you will get a list of all the dates that begin from 1st of January 2023 for next 365 days. Once you have the list from the transform ribbon on the list tools, click on the two table option to turn this into a tabular format. Let's name this column as date and right click change type to date. This is the bare bones calendar. The extended calendar here that I have built has many other useful columns. So let's create such an extended calendar. Go to the add column ribbon and use the date options to introduce many of the helpful columns. For example, I can extract the year, I can extract the month, I can extract the name of the month, I can extract the day of week as a number, I can extract day of week as a name. These are all standard columns. The first advanced column that I would like to add is is weekend column. If you observe day of week, zero stands for Sunday, six stands for Saturday. So we just have to check if this is zero or six and then yes for weekend, no for not weekend. That kind of a thing can be done with conditional column. If day of week equals six, yes. If day of week equals zero, yes, else no. Another handy calculation that we would like to have in business analysis is start of the month. Keep the date column selected, go to add column, date, month, and then introduce a start of the month. Alternatively, you could also add end of the month. Another useful thing to have in the calendar table is year month. This is a composite value that tells me 2023 01, 2023 02 like that. And it can be helpful when you are doing some advanced date related calculations. To calculate year month, we can just say custom column and then introduce year month as we already have year. So we'll insert that and then times this with 100 plus Take the month and insert this. This will add year month as a number. And once you have this number, you can use this number to subtract or add years quite easily. If you want to go ahead in one year, you just have to add 100 to this number. Another helpful column to have is type of the month. Here I have got type of the month. I'll show you first what this is. This will tell me if a month is any other month, last year, same month or previous month or this month or next month or other months. This is quite helpful because if you have a column like this, you could use this to build some dynamic reporting in your Power BI layers. To do that kind of a thing, we need to also have a sense of what the current date is. So we can use the custom column here and then ask Power BI for what is the current date. So we can say current month. And here we can use date time dot local now. This will give us the current time and date. 
we don't want this level of detail. We just want to take this up to 1st of March 2023. So I'm going to edit this formula again. Let's send this to the start of the month. And then that will give you 3 1 2023 12 a.m. Given this current month, we can now calculate what month we are in, whether this is the current month, previous month, next month or other months quite easily. For this, we need to make one additional change to the current month. Instead of a date time like this, we would like to turn this into a number format like this. So we want to take the current month and make it 2023-03. We'll do all of that in the same column. So I'll edit this step. So we'll take all of this and we'll make a variable from it. We'll call this as let cm is equal to this. We'll generate an output here in date dot year of cm times 100 plus date dot month of cm. If you notice this, this is the same way we have calculated year month, but here we are creating a variable with the current month. So we will get 2023-03 as a number. Now that we have both of these numbers, we can calculate the difference in months. To do this, we'll just select both of these columns and add column standard arithmetic subtraction. This will tell you for each of these dates, how far in the past they are. So these are all minus two months minus one month, zero means current month, one is next month and anything other is other months. Now that we do have this subtraction, we can introduce a conditional column and here select the subtraction equals zero is this month, one is next month, minus one is previous month, anything else is other months we will have that kind of a categorization or tagging for all of our months. And this will be dynamic as you refresh the query. If the date changes and we roll over to April or May, my month calculations will automatically update. At this point, we don't need these two columns anymore. So I'm going to just remove that and our calendar table is done. We can name this query as calendar. I'm just going to call this as calendar demo and close and apply to bring this into Power BI. Ta-da! A calendar table out of thin air. Now that we have a calendar table, you might be thinking, how do I use this? Here is a video on Power BI that teaches you how to build a cool looking dashboard from your data. Check it out.